This is the message that the apostles heard from God and now is being declared to you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. This teaching can get complicated very quickly, and so I am going to try to simplify it. And then I'm going to show you where Calvinism fits in all of this, and why it is so dangerous, and why um, many members of Calvinism have become bewitched. There's nothing in the scriptures that you can show them that they won't respond by going to Romans chapter 9 or Romans chapter 6. This video is not for the Calvinist. This video is for those who oppose Calvinism, want to know about Calvinism, or are just a demon hunter. One of the things that make me very upset about Calvinism is that it teaches the idea that there is no original thought. Every thought comes from God. Every single action comes from God because God decreed every action. God is like the filter through everything. It ultimately goes back to God and it makes God the bad guy very quickly uh, for many who see it clearly. And for others, they revel in this God um, that is not of the Bible. It's just wicked. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel where I go live every Saturday from 8 to 10 p.m. or so. Uh, sometimes past 10, but, um, you know, uh, we talk about all sorts of things. Usually, like, poltergeist activity and stuff like that. I think one thing that irks me is the fact that if God is the one that is decreeing all things, then he is decreeing for these demons to do exactly what they are doing. He is decreeing for all evil to come to pass. It's through the two-lens system. I have a bone to pick with that. If God is really the one that is performing behind the scenes, then there's really nothing the devil is doing that God didn't decree for him to do. In my studies, I have learned that there are two types of demonic energy. One is to entice you and pull you in, and one is to repulse you, push you away. I have met non-Christians who have been repulsed by demonic energy. That is interesting, but that is what happens. So I see people pulled into Calvinism that seem to really love Calvinism, and then others who are repulsed by it. So I just want to make that fact known. I'm going to be briefly going over the light versus the dark, and then we're going to be diving into the deeper things of what this demon is. Starting with John chapter 1, verses 4 through 5, it says, In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There are other translations where the darkness is not overcoming it. It's not comprehending the light. This conflict that I am reading from in John chapter 1, verses 4 through 5, it shows... A conflict older than the earth itself. It is a precursor to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 15 says, What agreement has light with darkness? Or what portion has a believer with an unbeliever? Here is where our point of contention lies. Because if we look at the KJV or even the NIV and a handful of others, you'll see where it says, What agreement has Christ with Belial? What is Belial? So let's break down exactly what Belial means. The meaning is worthlessness, obsolete, and beyond purpose. Some writings believe that Belial is Satan himself, but others believe he is actually second in command of Satan. After all, we do not know Satan's name. It's how the devil appears omnipotent. He has others that do his bidding. So if Christ can be understood as light and Belial can be understood as the darkness, where else do we see Belial in the scriptures? Well, in 2 Samuel 22, 5, it says, For the waves of death encompassed me, torrents of Belial made me afraid. That is one other translation. I think the Darby translation, if I'm not mistaken. Here it says torrents of destruction in the New International Version. The English version says destruction. This study Bible says chaos. King James says floods of ungodly men. American Standard Version says floods of ungodliness in general. Here we have Darby, torrents of Belial. But we have other versions that say floods of Belial, and then we have streams of worthlessness. And what's interesting here is worthlessness, ungodliness, darkness, destruction, chaos. These are all traits of Belial. Now see the actions of people who start following in the footsteps of Belial, known as the children of Belial. 1 Kings 21.13 says, There came in two men, children of Belial, and sat before him, and the men of Belial witnessed against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did 
blasphemed God and the king. Then they carried him forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. These children of Belial bared false witness against this man. Ironically, this is what cancel culture started becoming. It was twisting things to fit the narrative to then attack the person and get rid of them. Uh, riling the people up to then turn on whoever you want. We see that today. And the best lies are mixed in with truth, which is the case of Augustine and Pelagius. Pelagius, it's been uncovered recently in, in recent years that he's not the heretic that everyone thought he was. Augustine had bared false witness against him. So in that moment, Augustine was acting in darkness. Belial. He was a son of Belial in that moment. Can I say he's a son of Belial straight across the board? You know what? That's between him and God. But I will say, if he is in heaven, he is the least of the saints. Those who follow in the footsteps of Belial find themselves talking a lot of trash. Proverbs 16:27 says, A man of Belial diggeth up evil, and on his lips there is as a scorching fire. This includes speaking blasphemies, bearing false witness, gossip, um, any of these things. So let's look at some extra biblical sources here. Jubilee 1533 says, And now I announce unto thee that the children of Israel will not keep true to his ordinance, and they will not circumcise their sons according to all his law. For in the flesh of their circumcision, they will omit the circumcision of their sons. And all of them, sons of Belial, also Belial, will leave their sons uncircumcised as they were born. When they rebel against establishments, they rebel hard, really hard. They don't just rebel a little bit. They don't just simply like fight back and then get away. No, they fight back and they get in their face. They do the things that get their attention. Reformers came from the Protestant Reformation. Now, am I saying that all Protestants are bewitched? No, it's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that in the Protestant Reformation, things got really nasty very quickly for a lot of different reformers. They were doing things they should not have been doing, like burning people at the stake. Yes, John Calvin, I'm looking at you. Or breaking vows left and right. That would be Martin Luther. This here is the Damascus document, column 4. says, Belial is unrestrained in Israel, just as God said by Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amaz, saying, Fear and pit and snare are upon thee, dweller in the land. This is Isaiah 24, 17. The three types of traps that Belial sets forth is fornication, wealth, and defiling the sanctuary. And this is something that the Catholic Church is guilty of as well. This is not just something that reformers do. I'm saying reformer here. I'm not trying to imply something here. I'm just saying that either you're basically a Catholic, Orthodox, or reformer, or outside of that, I guess you could be anti-denominational because that's kind of me. <laughs> Belial can be found with those who are incredibly self-righteous, those who hold positions of power, who know how to swindle people. There are probably many in the Eastern. I'm sticking to what I know here. Um, and Calvinism being in the West, we're going to continue sticking to the West. Cessationism is very common among um, the Calvinist groups who believe that the gifts of the Holy Spirit have ceased um, 2,000 years ago. These particular people also believe that there was no power back then. They have a form of godliness, but deny its power have nothing to do with this, such people. They are the kind who worm their way into homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires, always learning, but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. This one is incredibly important. I'm going to tell you why. What are the most prominent reformed teachers known for? They're known for having lots of books, learning things of the past of different teachers that are in their uh, theological circle. Where there are scandals in the church, you are going to find Belial. So if you look at the Catholic Church, how the lid was blown off a couple of times, where they kept trying to sweep a lot of disgusting things under the rug, it caught up to them. Belial was involved in that. The Southern Baptist Convention has over 200 pages of assault and uh, mostly, if not all, have something to do with minors. I'm not going to pull that up. I pulled it up on my live last Saturday. I'm not going to pull that up again because uh, I don't like looking at it. <laughs> but it is a real list. It's going to come from the SBC website. I'll be putting that in the description below for you guys to read. But 
These people uh, should obviously be handed over to Satan if they haven't been already. It starts with mixing Bible in with other belief systems. Light and dark should be just as separated as Christ and Belial. Just as separated as in Genesis chapter 1. God separated the light from the darkness. The darkness could not comprehend the light. Belial cannot comprehend Jesus Christ. So now that we understand how Belial can infect the church, by welcoming in outside belief systems, mixing in the light and dark in one way or another. If God decreed all evil, then God is ultimately holding darkness in his hand. You're mixing Hindu beliefs into Christianity. You are imposing Belial onto Jesus Christ by going into the five-point Calvinist system. That is my conclusion. I believe that is what is evident. God is responsible in the system for all the damage that Belial has done, what the darkness itself has done. If anything, it's a perversion of the light. It's absence of the light. It's a negative. It's just like you can't add death. You can only take away life. Death is a negative. Negatives aren't creations. Perversions aren't creations. It's taking something that already exists and trying to twist it around to make it your own. This is something that the devil does very well. And imposing that on God is not okay. So who is the God of Calvinism? If he's not the God of the Bible, can we find this God out there somewhere? I don't think so. When studying closely on the God of Calvinism, I discovered that he seems to have all of the traits of someone who suffers from narcissistic personality disorder. He's a God made in man's image. It's why there are many Calvinists that can't help but be arrogant. It's why there's many Calvinists that may feel like they need to control certain aspects of their lives. Bad theology can be a slippery slip for people. It can stop them from preaching the gospel the way that they could have. It can stop people from laying hands on the sick, attempting to perform miracles, praying about performing miracles. Anyway, that is all for this video. I hope and pray that this helps somebody. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe to my channel where I can go over uh, other things that are outside of Calvinism because I don't want to be an anti-Calvinist channel. I want to move on to other demons that are influencing other people. And there's other systems out there that are messing with people. Witchcraft is getting in the church too. So there's that. Anyway, I will see you on the next video. Take care. God bless.